Dr. John Halperin is the medical director of neuroscience at Atlantic Health and the author of Lyme Disease, an evidence-based approach. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So, Dr. Halperin, I think the CDC report that came out recently was pretty scary. It said that as many as 300,000 people a year could actually have Lyme disease, but most of those cases go unreported. Why have the numbers jumped so dramatically? The main thing is it's not more common in the areas that have already had it, but there's been a gradual expansion of the parts of the country where uh, uh, where the disease occurs. And, and I know 49 states uh, so now have it, Lyme disease, well, in, is in that re right? Well, in reality, 95% of cases come from uh, the, the eastern seaboard of the United States, uh, ranging from the southern end of Maine down to uh, uh, Virginia or so. Everyone talks about deer ticks, but right. it's actually the mice right. who are, that are carrying these ticks? So the tick goes through a two-year life cycle, and when it's small, it likes to feed on field mice and other very small animals. The adult actually likes to lodge on a deer, and that's where they mature and lay their eggs. So you need deer in the environment to keep the ticks uh, in the life cycle, but the real reservoir for the infection is field mice. And tell us how a tick infects a person with Lyme disease. So he crawls along, usually jumps off a blade of grass onto you, and then he has a sort of pincer's mouth parts that he inserts into the skin. And ticks have developed a lot of mechanisms. You'd think you would brush it off, but they actually inject something like Novocaine as well as blood thinners. So they attach to you, and they'll stay attached for 24, 48, 72 hours and feed. And as they feed, your blood goes into the tick, and he returns the favor by injecting infectious organisms, whatever he's carrying, into you. Uh, although that takes time, so how long? How long does it take? So for for the Lyme bacteria, typically 24, 48 hours at a minimum before the bacteria are able to get into the host and infect you. Thomas Mather is is a public health entomologist at the University of Rhode Island. He brought some ticks. Yay, to show us just how <laughs> tiny they can be. Tell us what we're looking at in these so Petri dishes. In one of the Petri dishes are unfed adult female and uh, male ticks. Um, the females are really the ones that bite. Um, the males sort of are there to mate. In the next Petri dish is a great big engorged um, female tick. And so that takes about seven days to get to that stage. And after about seven days, um, they would drop off of their host wherever they are. If it's in your backyard, um, that's where, where they'll be. And they lay about 1,500 eggs and they all hatch out. So for instance, our estimates in Rhode Island, because as the doctor said, they're on deer, um, every deer every year carries about um, enough of these adult ticks dropping off and laying eggs to make about a half a million um, new ticks, new baby ticks. So um, with more deer, um, that's why this problem has grown at the rate it has. So how do you determine if in fact you have Lyme disease? What are the symptoms? You may have an allergic reaction to the tick bite, just like you can to a mosquito bite. So there may be a little redness and itchiness that goes away after a day or two. But then if you've been infected, uh, the bacteria that the tick has injected start spreading out in the skin. And as they spread out, you get a red reaction to that. We often hear about this bullseye rash. Right. And it, it, let's talk about that because I know in many cases, the bullseye rash never appears. As these spirochetes spread out from the, uh, the bite site, you get this expanding red rash. Many times what'll happen is as the leading edge gets red, the part inside that becomes pale and then you get this bullseye target sort of appearance. The issue of how many people get the rash is something that's debated. If this is on your back or, or your bottom or behind your thigh, you may never see it. Right. So part of the issue is how many people have a rash as a post how many people notice a rash. Then you say there are flu-like symptoms. What happens in a subset of people is the bacteria spread through your body. When that happens, your immune system gets all upset, and it does what you do with any infection spreading through your body, which is you get a fever, aches, pains, you feel terrible. Including joint pain, I know. You, you can have joint pain, muscle pain, pain all over, headaches. Then I know there's some nervous system issues. Right. 
Facial paralysis, meningitis. Right. So meningitis is a scary word. It means inflammation of the lining of the brain. What people don't realize is the mo most cases of meningitis are actually very benign. They feel terrible. You have a wicked headache. You feel sick, but they don't harm you. And Lyme is that sort of meningitis, where it's an inflammation that's very painful, um, certainly makes you very unhappy, uh, but doesn't do much damage in and of itself. How, how is Lyme typically treated? Uh, it turns out for most things, including including even meningitis, oral antibiotics will do the job in the vast majority of patients. Uh, typically somewhere between two and four weeks is what we use. In severe cases, severe nervous system cases, severe heart cases, uh, we'll go to IV antibiotics or if someone hasn't responded to oral antibiotics. And again, it's an intravenous antibiotic that we use for somewhere between two and four weeks in most people. Daniel Nauheim lives in New York City. He was diagnosed with Lyme disease back in 2009. And, and Daniel, where did you get it and what made you realize you had it? Um, I picked it up playing frisbee golf upstate New York in the woods. And I realized it about a week later when I had a big bullseye rash on my thigh. And I actually went to the emergency room at that time, but they told me I just had a spider bite and they discharged me with no medication or treatment. And as time got, went on, uh, the symptoms were worse. I suffered memory loss and I was just really struggling to walk. And after being treated with antibiotics for about two weeks, I started to feel a little better, but the aches and pains went on for about two months. Daniel said he would not have tested positive necessarily with a blood test. Isn't that part of the problem? There's no definitive diagnosis necessarily for Lyme disease? What we do in the blood test is measure your body's immune recognition of the bacteria and that takes time to develop. So if someone comes in with the rash, which is very early in infection, over half the patients at that time will have negative blood tests. By the time the infection has been there for a month or two, our immune systems have responded to it, and virtually all patients have positive blood tests. Well, up next, Daniel's fine, and we're so happy that you're feeling good now, Daniel, but a growing number of people say they aren't. They say they have something called chronic Lyme disease, and that has the medical community up in arms. We're gonna look at that controversy when we we come back.